Uh, we manufacture solar powered lanterns for the one and a half billion people that still don't have access to electricity and depend on kerosene, wood and other fossil fuel for lighting. Uh, currently, Greenlight Planet operates in about 25 countries and we've brought light to a million plus people across the world. Uh, the big problem with kerosene lamps is that it's very expensive, it's very toxic and it's very dim. Uh, uh, there was a recent study by the WHO that said, you know, living in a home with kerosene lamps is almost equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes every day. This is involuntary smoking cigarettes from the day you were born. So the health impact is significant. From a cost point of view, people are spending as much as 30 to 40 percent of their income just on fuel for lighting. And the light that comes out of it is not even sufficient to read or be very productive. It's simply ambient light so you can move around. So a lot of money is being spent by the poorest people in, in, in communities to get very minimal amount of lighting. When we started Greenlight Planet, we first started with the intent of developing a technology, a product that would be able to work in these rural communities where they could get access to light in an affordable, reliable and dependable manner. We developed our first line of products, the Sun King Solar Lanterns, which take the light from the sun and give you energy and you have light at night. Uh, with this product you're able to work longer, you're able to uh, uh, stay up later and you're actually able to be productive after the sun sets. Uh, we've done numerous impact assessments and we've seen productivity double significant impact on health and education. The 66% of India has access to electricity. That means 33% of India does not. 33% of a billion people is a lot of people. So the opportunity is huge. The business sense or the business opportunity of serving the off-grid market in India alone is humongous. But that comes with its challenges. The off-grid market lives in small, remote, disconnected villages. Uh, typically, electrification is not there, so TVs don't work. Literacy is very low, so newspapers don't work. So the ability to reach these customers at scale is very, very difficult. So apart from working with extremely price-sensitive customers, you also have to deal with lack of infrastructure. and that's. If you're working in rural India, that's the entire package. And, and what's an interesting challenge is that uh, we know that this can be resolved. And there's a fantastic case study. Take mobile phones. 66% of India has electricity, but about 85% of India has mobile phones. So if they can do it, there's obviously a way, and there's a way for us to do it. And the question is, the challenge is for everyone out there, is that how can we innovate and use existing technologies, existing business practices, modify them, improve them to work in the rural environment and actually make a difference. The innovation doesn't just stop at developing a product. What we do, or the biggest challenge we have to overcome, is the ability or a mechanism to reach or take our products into these communities and make them available to the people. We have two strategies. The first is we work with a network of partners that already have access to our customers and we work with them to make our products available through their own distribution and rural reach. Partners could be NGOs, it could be government organizations, it could be CSRs or it could even be corporates. The second approach is where we've created our own innovative rural distribution system. What we do is we empower our customers, the same off-grid, unelectrified customers living in villages, to become promoters of this technology in their community. So apart from benefiting from using the product, they're also given the opportunity to promote the product in their territory, thereby earning a secondary source. Greenlight Planet started off as a student project and was supported by a lot of business plan competitions and other donations and funding that we received. And this was very, very essential for us because it allowed us to make experiments, allowed us to make expensive experiments and allowed us to make mistakes. And by making these mistakes, were we able to refine our business model so then we could then attract commercial capital to help scale it up. I think that this industry is still very nascent. Yes, we have a working model, but that's not the model. And we want to further experiment and further try out new things so we can reach further deeper into the pyramid. So uh, donor funding is absolutely essential. It's essential till we can identify a few working, scalable models that can then be replicated and taken up by the pure private, private equity and other financiers to take it to scale. But there is still a lot of experimentation in the business model, in the distribution model, in the reach of and to rural communities, in the ability to service them after you've provided the product, and the ability to train them on how to use products and services effectively.